hello friends in this video we are going to discuss about slob rule so let us start our discussion with the question from the dental dex and the question is the main concept of cone shift technique is that as the vertical or horizontal angulation of the x-ray tube head changes the object buckle or closest to the tube head will move to which side of the radiograph when compared to the lingual object and the options are same or opposite so the technique which is used to localize the object is slop technique and it is also known as cone shift technique, tube shift technique, Clark's technique, buckle object rule and Walton's projection. So the slop technique is also known as cone shift technique, tube shift technique, Clark's technique, buckle object rule and Walton's projection. So let us try to learn the principle behind the slop technique. So the principle of this method requires exposing two different angulated intraoral x-ray images in one area. So we need to expose two different angulated intraoral x-ray images. And the first image will act as reference image. And the horizontal and the vertical angulation of the position indicating device is then modified prior to taking of the second image. So the first image will be taken in one angulation and the position indicating device is modified and then second image is taken with the another projection. So we need to take two projections of the same area with different angulations. And the two images are compared for the positional changes of the object of interest which will determine if it is located towards buccal or lingual. So let us try to understand this with the simple video. So as you can see in this image, this is the image with the normal projection with the palatal root marked. So let us now try to see the change in the position of the palatal root as there is change in angulation. So as you can see in this image, as the position indicating device will move to the mesial side, the palatal root which is marked will also move to the mesial side. So this can be illustrated in this image. As the position indicating device will move to the mesial side, the palatal root which is marked will also move to the mesial side. So in the same way as the position indicating device will move to the distal side, the palatal root which is marked will also move to the distal side. So this can be illustrated in this image. So if the position indicating device will move to the distal side, the palatal root which is marked will also move to the distal side. So in slop technique, if the object is moving to the same side of the position indicating device, the object is located to the lingual side. If the object is moving to the opposite direction of the position indicating device, then the object is usually located buccally. So this is how you can localize the object if it is located lingually or buccally with the help of slop technique. So in the video also we had seen the palatal root which was marked was moving in the same direction as the position indicating device. So the root is located lingually as it is moving in the same direction as position indicating device. So let us now see where and all we can apply the slop technique. So it is mainly used in separation and identification of the superimposed canals. And it can also be used in movement and identification of the superimposed structures. So in the maxillary radiograph there are many structures which will be superimposed like floor of the maxillary sinus, zygomatic arch etc. So slop technique mainly helps in movement and identification of the superimposed structures. And it is also used in the determination of the exact working length in the endodontic procedures. And it can also be used in identification of the undiscovered canal. So in some cases there can be 4 or 5 canals which can be present. So it can be used in identification of the undiscovered canals. And it is also used in determination of the facial lingual location. So especially in impacted canines, slop technique can be used in localization of the impacted canine. And it can also be used in the determination of the curvature of the canals. And finally the most important use is it is mostly used in the location of the foreign objects. So you might be having a doubt in your mind how will be the slop technique used in edentulous areas. So in edentulous areas slob rule can be applied by simply utilizing the dental anatomic landmarks as a guide. And in this scenario, position of the object should be studied in relation to the reference landmark. So after the discussion, we can come to a conclusion that the object which is located buccally will move to opposite direction. And the object which is located lingually will move to same direction.